Welcome to the Empowerment Zone with Ramona Houston, where we zone in on black and brown relations and our journey to empowering our communities. Hello, welcome to the Empowerment Zone with Ramona Houston. Today, my guest is Jesus Martinez. He lives here in Atlanta, Georgia, but he was born in Sheepshead Bay, Brooklyn, and raised in Queens in New York, where he graduated from high school. Um, he uh, later went into the service and joined the U.S. Uh, Army, and now he is founder and president of Peachtree Commercial Capital. He created this company by using his expertise and background in um, the in his work in the military, where he worked in the finance, and he also worked in the finance in industry for over 25 years. Peachtree Commercial Capital is a full-service commercial loan brokerage firm servicing all 50 states in commercial loans for small businesses using SBA 7A and 504 funding to working capital lines of credit, factoring and invoice funding, equipment finance, asset-based lending, and much more. They also specialize in funding for commercial real estate and investment pro properties through portfolio lending, rental loans, fix and flip loans, cash out, refinances, and commercial mortgage mortgages. What's very interesting about Jesus in this current time is during the COVID-19 pandemic, Pandemic, he and his team were able to assist companies with submission of funding of the EIDL and PPE loan programs. The EIDL is the Economic Injury Disaster Loan, and the PPP is the Paycheck Protection Program. And he helped let Latinos as well as other minority groups to gain funding uh, in excess of seven million just in the local Hispanic community. Welcome, Jesus. Welcome. Thank you, Ramona. And thank you for having me on your on your show today. Well, I'm very happy to have you. Um, so tell us a little bit about yourself and your background. Uh, you, you're from New York, and how did you get to Atlanta, and what was your professional trajectory? Well, I, you kind of hit the nail on the head. I was born in Sheepshead Bay, Brooklyn, New York, but I was really, I can't claim that, but I was really raised in Jamaica, Queens since I was like three years old. Um, and uh, of course, we went to high school in Smithtown, Long Island. Um, graduated, joined the service, did my five years in the service, but uh, the, where it, it had, did nothing compared to what I'm doing now in the military. I was a combat engineer, a demolitions expert when I was there. But the biggest thing that, that, that changed my life is when I left the military, I had one of those jobs where I really couldn't go out and get a job. So I started looking, went back to school, um, did some career um, 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 things where I was looking for jobs and, you know, Ethos Group out of Las Colinas, Texas, um, you know, took me on board and, you know, as a, as a new person, as a newbie, not knowing anything in the industry and decided to train me right. Um, and then, um, you know, I worked in for a very, very long time, 25, almost 25 years, uh, where now I don't have to worry about it. They taught me everything I know that, that helped me excel my company to where it's at today. So um, Ethos Group, um, they were a uh, finance and insurance, uh, a reinsurance company. Uh, they would help dealerships across the whole United States, um, set up their finance departments, train, mentor, and coach them. Plus, also helping with a lot of the business aspects of, of, the, of the automobile industry um, to where it helps the dealer expand and grow um, and do well. So I learned a lot working from them, and I traveled quite a bit with Ethos Group. And, um, you know, I, I give them a, a, a pat in the back because, you know, they, they do a phenomenal job everywhere they go. This is not accolades for them, but they, they know they're together what they do. But uh, that's what um, brought me to where I'm at today. You know, when I left Ethos and I, I decided to do something on my own, and this is uh, close to what I was doing um, to where in, I was working uh, as an indirect lender uh, with car dealerships and helping set up and talk to lenders and, you know, uh, negotiating deals with banks. So now I'm doing this on a commercial side. This is where PhD comes into play. You know, it's kind of the same thing, but on a different aspect, because now we're, we're strictly for businesses. 
We do funding for businesses, like you had mentioned, all the fundings that we offer, uh, but that's all we focus on. We don't do indirect lending. We don't do personal finances. And to be honest with you, that's the misconception a lot of people have when it comes to funding um, that they think that we're just like a bank and we're not. So, but um, I've been in Atlanta for about five years now, well, going on six years. And I'll tell you, my wife and I, we love it here. Um, I'm married, have, uh, uh, we have four kids together um, and uh, two granddaughters, you know, beautiful granddaughters that I, I enjoy you know, visiting. They live in um, Alabama, South Alabama, which is what they call the Redneck Riviera. Uh, and it's fun, uh, but a uh, great place to live. Uh, my son stayed there with his uh, with his wife and daughters, and we decided to move up here, and we love it up here. You know, and this is home for us now. And um, Atlanta is one of those cities where it just continues to grow. And, you know, endless opportunities for every investor out there, business owner, even people that just want to come live here. We're kind of uh, like a hub. You know this. You lived here for a long time. So it's kind of like a hub. So for me, this is uh, this is home now. So, so tell me a little bit of more about uh, Peace Tree Capital and you know your business and your value to the community in terms of the business community. Yeah, sure. Well, I started this company about right, almost three years ago, um, right out of my house. You know, um, my wife put me to work in the yard when I started when I when I left the Ethos Group, and I was like, "Wow, my hands!" And I don't do that kind of work, so. <laughs> <laughs> My idea list started growing on me. I said, you know, I can't keep doing this. So I, I love what I do. I enjoy doing this. This is, a, a, I mean, for me, it's not just about the business aspect, but also about the helping people, you know, attain their goals, their needs, especially in businesses. So I started this business almost three years ago out of my house. You know, I bought a desk, put it in my in, in a room and started working, you know. And uh, in the meantime, you know, I started, uh, you know, networking and building the relationship with a lot of uh, companies out there and with a lot of people and joined chambers and became um, uh, a good, how can I say, well, I'm an ambassador to two chambers and the two chambers that I'm an ambassador, I'm very involved with. So I do a lot for them and I got very involved with the community and people just start recognizing the name. The key thing for our business is to make sure people understand the differences between commercial lending and traditional lending. That's to get the big thing because people they still think that we're the same and we're not. You know, if you go to Wells Fargo, Bank of America, all these big national companies, yeah, you can go to them for, you know, credit cards, buying a car, getting a credit card, getting a bank account, checking your savings, maybe even doing some investments with them. We don't deal with that. We're strictly, strictly business and we're strictly, strictly investment pro- investment loans. And, you know, and people still think that, you know, the kind of rates and terms you would get with a tra- traditional lender you would get with us, which is not, you know, in our, in our industry, we deal primarily with non-traditional banks, investors, and uh, private lenders. That's what we deal with. That's where the, the terms hard money, bridge loans, all that stuff, that's where the terminology comes from, is from the, the non-traditional lenders. You know, So um, a lot of hard money lending, a lot of bridge lending, construction lending, people who want to build skyscrapers or just build a, a, a development of homes. Yes, there's banks up there that will do that, but right now with COVID-19, none, zero. A lot of banks are depending on me to help them out with their own clients because we have funding sources nationwide. We can go anywhere we want with this, whereas they can't. They have to stick to their traditional lending, their traditional guidelines. And if the guidelines say, no, we're not lending on this, guess what? I don't care how great of a customer you are with with your bank, um, the bank's going to have to deny you based on their lending. That's why you use me for. And that's the difference that, um, between a, a traditional bank and us is that we're able to get a little bit more um, um, creative when it comes to helping finding help find the, the funding the customer needs. So, so w- walk us through the process of uh, working with you in terms of those individuals or businesses who may want to work with Peachtree Capital to get a loan. Uh, yeah, what's that's, the process? That's a, great, that's a great question because see, we try to simplify the process and as we grow, we've kind of you know, um, transformed ourselves to where we try to make it easy for the consumers that are requesting the funding. So when a customer calls us, well, the first thing we do is we assess them. And this doesn't cost them anything because information, in order for us to be able to uh, assess the customer properly to see exactly what they're wanting, we need to know more about them. 
need to know what their goals are, what they're looking to do with the money. You know, have they, we, we jog their memories to make sure they, they know really what they're looking for. A guy might be calling and telling me, hey, I need a, a working capital line of credit for my business. But in all reality, your business really needs factoring invoice financing. Don't get me wrong. That sounds good, what you told me, but have you considered this, this, and that? They don't look at the long term of, you know, what what it's going to be, you know, getting that working capital line of credit. The example I gave a client the other day is, you know, let's say I do get you that working capital line of credit. Okay, you use it, you use it, you max it out, and you still need more money. Where are you going to get the funding from? That nobody's going to give you a loan because now you're maxed out on a working capital line of credit, and you can't afford another loan. So that's why I always give the customers the options of what's out there instead of just saying, yes, I can get you this. The assessments is so important because it allows us to understand where to go with it. It allows us to give that customer that came asking came in asking for one thing. It allows us to give them more options that they would never consider that makes more sense than that working capital line of credit. Okay. Another example we do because we're huge in, in uh, investment properties for the for the investor for investors, you know, a lot of investors said, "Tell us, I want to." There's a work is a uh, um, a line of credit that we use for investors, but they think that's the the best thing you know they, they can have. Well, there's hundreds of lenders out there that loan for the same amount of people, but what they don't understand is that when it comes to investment in properties, they're going to look at experience. They want to make sure you have experience. If you don't have experience, don't get me wrong. It doesn't mean no. It means that you're not going to be considered like the experienced people. They're going to look at the liquidity. Just like any business, if you want to start a business, you can't start a business with zero money in your pocket. You have to start a business with money in your pocket. You have to have skin in the game. For example, SBA, you know, they're the best way to finance a, a, a business, a startup or an existing business. Okay, They'll even do real estate for existing businesses. Okay, but you have to have skin in the game. They're the lowest ones. They normally ask for 10 to 15 percent cash down, where other lenders will ask um, 20 to 30 percent cash down. But qualifying through the SBA can be very, very, how can I say, to be nice. It can be a headache. It can be, it can be, uh, it can take a long time for them to say no. So a lot of people that have experienced with the S have experience with the SBA don't want to go that route because they know that it's a tedious process with them. We've simplified that. We ask the questions up front to make sure, hey, would the SBA be a better source than going with a, a non-traditional lender and vice versa? So um, I don't know if that answers your question. I, I like to ramble on sometimes. So No, that does. That does because business owners need to know and understand what the process is for commercial lending and how you can assist them. So you talked about uh, making an assessment of the potential client. What mm -hmm. goes on after that? What, how, what, what are the next steps for, uh, your, in your process? Well, normally when I do an assessment, I ask the customers to give us you know, two, three days to assess to see what options are out there. We don't need to look at your credit. We ask them what your credit's like. People should know what their credit's like. And if you don't know, we send them to a source so they can pull their own credit bureau where it doesn't put an inquiry on it. It's what they call a soft pull on their own self. And a lot of people don't know, you can pull your credit once a year for free without putting an inquiry on it. Why? It's because you need to know where you stand. You need to know what's on your credit and you need to know how to dispute things if there something ever comes up. So we tell people, go there, go to this place and pull your own credit and send it to us so we can look at it. Okay, so what the assessment does is it allows us to look at everything. It allows us to look at everything we asked you and see what's the best result. What's going to be the best loan we can give you? That's that's what it allows us to do. So if a customer comes and tells me, hey, we need this, and after we assess, three days later, I'll come back and say, hey, I'm glad you feel this way. Most people felt the same way, but guess what? Here are other options that we can offer. Have you considered this and why you should consider this? And let's outweigh the benefits between doing this and that. We give those customers that option. Now, it's up to them to decide whether they want to continue moving forward with us or not. That assessment, it costs them zero. And if they want to go somewhere else to do it, and if they want to find a, their own way of doing it, that, I'm okay with that. 
Me, it's about making, for us, it's about making sure the customers are doing it right the first time around. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. Most people jump into a loan not knowing what they're signing. I see that all the time. You don't, and my question in my mind, I don't, I'm not directly going to tell them this, but in my mind, I'm thinking, and you don't know what your terms were, and you don't know you were paying 50% interest rate. Mm-hmm. You didn't know any of this before you signed, but I can't, I can't judge because some people just didn't have the options at that time. You know, their, their business is failing. They needed a working capital line of credit. They knew how expensive it was. It, it is, but you know what? At that point, they didn't have any other options. And that's what we're trying to avoid when we assess a loan is trying to avoid them making a mistake and in going into that interest rate loan. Maybe that is the right answer for them. Maybe that is the only solution for them. But our job is to make sure that we can find everything else that's out there before they jump into that 50% interest rate loan. That's our job. That's what the assessment does. It allows us to you know, assess the customer properly. So the customer tells me, yeah, I'm opening a new business. Okay, well, tell me more about the business. Give me, tell me why you show up in this business. Some people don't even know what a business plan is. Some people don't know what a profit and loss statement looks like or a balance sheet looks like, you know? So those are the things that I want to make sure they understand because if they're going to open a new business, they need to know what a profit and loss statement looks like, what a balance sheet looks like, what projections look like, because that's what's going to carry their business forward. Now, am I going to take them through the process of teaching them all that? No, I'm not. But I am set up with a couple of universities here in in Atlanta and every university out there, I'm going to say, um, has what they call the SBDC, Small Business Development Center. And believe it or not, for people who want to get into business or who want to expand their business or who wants to grow their business, visit them. It doesn't cost nothing for them to to, to do that. It's like SCORE. I don't know if you ever heard of SCORE. Yes. They're a nonprofit. Okay. Same thing with SCORE. It doesn't cost you anything. They have people. People that are have been doing what they do for a long time. They've retired from their jobs, and all they do is they help support and get you where you need to go. It, it, they they look at you and say, "Okay, you want a business plan? You need to have a five year projection." Now let's walk through the process. So that way, when that business plan is ready, now you have a plan to succeed. All you have to do is follow it. Okay. So all that information is things that we give our clients so they can succeed in every aspect of their business, whether it's a startup, whether it's a current existing business, or if if they're looking to, you know, get into the real estate market and do investment. I've been doing this for a long time. My my dad raised us on fix and flips in the 70s in New York. So my dad was doing fix and flip before it was even a big thing like it is today. So that's so I have experienced that we're investors ourselves. Our second company, my wife is the one who does it most of it, but our second company, we invest in properties ourselves. So what better way to get into an, into an, as a new investor than with somebody who can coach and, and train them to do the right thing? Why? Because the more successful they are, the more successful we are. If we can provide you the funding and the coaching and the mentoring, and you end up making you know, twenty, thirty, fifty, sixty thousand dollars on a property, will you do it again? Absolutely. And you'll continue doing it because you know you were successful at it. That's what assessment does and helps us allow us to do. And that's what I teach my guys here to talk to when when you talk to the customers to do is assess the customer properly. That's what we do. That's what the assessment really does. This thanks for sharing. And so what we see in terms of working with your clients is it's a three-point process. Uh they come to you wanting a loan. You first do an assessment of the client. Secondly, you provide them what options because they may think they need one thing, but you see a better option for them. And, and another may be better. And then third, the client makes the decision on how they would move forward. Correct. So so that's your three-step process. So do you have any advice for current business owners or future business owners in terms of uh, commercial lending um, in in your final thoughts uh, for today? Yeah, and I do. You know, uh, unfortunately, COVID has um, hit everybody. Worldwide, COVID has hit everybody um, pretty hard. And a, a lot of business owners are actually losing their businesses because of this, because of pan, the pandemic. And not just that, and of course, there's been riots across the United States and worldwide, you know, and, and we can only pray that things get better. But for business owners or people who want to get into business, believe it or not, there is still funding out there. SBA, yes, SBA is still loaning money. 
Okay. The government's looking for ways to help businesses and to help the economy out. Okay. But there's, there's funding available for every business out there. All you have to do is pick up the phone and call us or call somebody that you trust that can say, Hey, let's look at, see how we can help you. There's a lot of brokers out there. There's a lot of good brokers, a lot of bad brokers. There's like, just like there is banks. Um, be patient with when you when you speak to people because you know with COVID, of course the banks are limited on the amount of people that are working there most people are working from home and you know we are we are fortunate enough that we still come to the office every day um but most banks aren't even open yet you know what are, what's going to happen to them what happened to that 20-year relationship you have with that bank that now is not lending money reach out to us we have no problem talking to you, but just don't stop. Don't give up in your dream and your fight to becoming successful, whether it's in investment properties or starting a business. Let us tell you if it's worth it or not. You know. Um, now, if you're a person that has no experience in the industry and you're trying to get into it with no money out of your pocket, I'm probably going to tell you, hey, you, this is probably not a good idea. You're probably not going to like what I have to say, but I'm going to be bluntly honest. I'm a New Yorker. I'm going to be straightforward with you. I'm not going to cuss like I used to, but you know, I'm going to I'm going to be straightforward with my clients. You know, it's, it is what it is. You know, for me, it's about the relationship. I've I've grown my business strictly on relationship, and that's all I want for my clients is a relationship. But then that way they can become successful. And if that happens, in turn, I know that I'm going to be coming. I'll become successful because they'll continue to use us in the future for their funding needs. But don't stop, keep going, fight for what you what you want, live your dream and you know, pick up the phone and call us. Sounds great. So what is your website? Uh, if you'd like to share with, the, with uh, my audience so that they can get in yeah. contact with you if they'd like to use your services. Yeah, my website is uh, um, www.peachtreecap.com. Uh, we're also on LinkedIn and Facebook, uh, Peachtree Commercial Capital. Uh, and of course, uh, if you need, uh, if you'd like to get a hold of me, my uh, email is info at peachtreecap.com, or you can call us at 678-784-4114. Um, you can ask for me, Jesus Martinez, or anybody here, we'd be more than happy to help you. You know, we're all working on this together. We're all a team here. We understand the needs that uh, people have. And again, you're not ob obligated to do anything with us. As If anything, just call and talk to us. Let us see if we can help you or not. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus Martinez from Peachtree Capital. Thank you so much for being my guest this morning and sharing such valuable information. Peachtree Commercial Capital, not Peachtree Capital. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Peachtree Commercial Capital. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Thank Jesus. you, Ramona. Enjoyed having you. A special thank you to the incredible team of the Empowerment Zone. Terry on Gully, theme song, NADWorks, digital support, and of course, our featured guest. If you enjoyed my podcast, please subscribe. We are on all of your favorite podcast platforms. Be sure to rate us on Apple Podcasts too. Thank you for your continued support.